Hey everyone, um, over the last sort of month and two, uh, I've been working on this uh, Power Macintosh uh, 7600 that I found at the recycling center. A uh, bit of a hard to find machine nowadays, um, especially um, given the age of some of these things. Uh, as you can see, it's very, very dirty, needs a good clean. Um, the case is very yellowed, some broken plastics and all the usual things. Uh, the machine was released around August of 96, uh, discontinued in July of 97. I've got the 132 megahertz variant, which um, I don't know um, how many of these they released before the G3 came along, but there we go. Uh, it came standard with 16 megabytes of RAM. Uh, mine's been upgraded with all sorts of random uh, memory modules, so more on that later. Uh, video memory is also upgradable too. Uh, mine's got the standard 2 megabytes fitted. Um, I believe it came standard with um, System 7 um, all the way up to 9.1 uh, supported, so that's quite good. And uh, we had an original listing price of 3000 US dollars, so that's spendy. Uh, so I'm just going to start off with just, just trying to clean the machine up really, it's really dirty, it's all the grills and stuff of just dirt and stuff from sitting outside, uh, you'll see some rust and things on the case later, um, but yeah, for now I'm just going to give it a good clean. Well, unfortunately I was a bit unprepared for such a project, I don't actually have any classic Macintosh hardware as such, so I had no keyboard, no mouse, no screen adapter, um, but also while I was there I spotted this machine as well, it's just a slot 1 Pentium 2 machine, uh, and also I found a GTX uh, 280 I think it was video card, so uh, not bad, not a bad haul. You can see some of the broken plastic as well from the power button area. Um, I do have the plastic and I do glue it back together, um, but it still doesn't look very pretty. I believe um, those power buttons as well, uh, they break because they're made out of plastic. And of course these machines are really old now, so yeah. Uh, anyway, the slot one machine, um, it was really disgusting as well. As, as you can see, it's covered in cobwebs and things like that. So, uh, But yeah, other than that, it's not a very interesting machine. Thankfully though, the inside of this machine wasn't too bad actually on the Mac. Um, bit of dirt, bit of grime, it needed a really good clean overall. And of course it has a flat uh, PRAM battery. Um, thankfully though, when I pulled this one out, um, it hadn't leaked. Um, and I don't know if this is the original one, but it's uh, got a date code uh, which you'll see here shortly uh, of 1995. So these things like to leak and they cause all sorts of damage to the motherboard. Um, thankfully not as bad as those Varta batteries, but yeah, still though they can leak. Um, so going through it with a toothbrush just to get in through all the gaps. Um, at this point over the last month I didn't have all the parts I needed to even power the machine on. Uh, so I'm doing just um, some cleaning and things like that. The case overall isn't in bad shape. There's a few um, scuff marks and things like that. I don't think this thing um, in its later years was in a very loving home, but um, I just went over it with a magic eraser uh, sponge and my toothbrush and just tried to get in there and uh, clean everything out because, you know, it's disgusting. It is really actually quite gross. I've actually never seen this much uh, dirt and grime caked onto a computer before. And these um, little vents or grills or whatever they are, uh, they were a magnet. Um, so you'll see here that I ended up using a um, cloth microfiber towel and just using my toothbrush to try and get in there and clean it out. Um, but yeah, some bits arrived. Um, this is, believe it or not, the most expensive part um, that I had to order for the build or the machine repair. Um, yeah, it was not easy to find, especially in New Zealand where these things are um, getting very, very hard to find, but I needed a keyboard because it's ADB and I don't have any ADB compatible keyboards. 
Uh, and unfortunately, this one, given it uses um, Alps switches, well, I believe they're Alps, um, you'll see there in a moment, um, I had to buy it, and yeah, it was a couple hundred dollars. <laughs> Uh, Spacebar got mushed in the post or, I don't know, seized in place. Um, overall, it's a bit yellowed, needs a really good clean, uh, the usual stuff. Um, but yeah, it's a usable keyboard and I managed to free up the spacebar, so that was good. Um, if anyone knows what these switches are, uh, let me know in the comments because there's the uh, switch there. Uh, but yeah, I managed to free up the spacebar. Overall, uh, not too bad, needs a good clean, it's just yellowed. Um, yeah, it's a shame that that was the only one I could find in the last month or two. And to be honest, I haven't seen any more come up. Uh, but yeah, the next item we ordered was a mouse. Um, yeah, and that's because I don't have any uh, ADB mice, so here we go. Um, and the annoying thing also with that keyboard was it needed a, um ADB cable. It didn't come with one, so I had to actually order a S-Video cable as a... Because, you know, that's the only thing I could find, but... Uh, more on that later but there's a new battery i got um you can still get these new thankfully i got that locally um and also i needed um a db15 i think it is adb15 not too sure on the connector uh to vga adapter because i don't actually own a apple monitor um that's compatible um, but yeah, before powering it on, I had a look inside because I had a feeling that there might be a reefer um, film capacitor in there, safety film capacitor. And sure enough, there was three of them, and sure enough, they the housings on them are all cracked. Um, so before even powering it on, I needed to recap the power supply. Um, once again, it took um, about three weeks to get all the capacitors I needed for the job. Um, but thankfully being a single sided um, board, um, you know, it, was, it wasn't multi-layer or anything, uh, it wasn't too hard to do that. Um, you'll just see here I'm having a bit of trouble there with some of the bigger ground planes on the copper um, paths. They suck all the heat out of the solder and I'm making it really hard to um, wick up the solder. Um, but yeah, the usual trick which you'll see me doing later. Um, which I forgot about at the start here, was to put some fresh solder on the um, connections and then on the tip, and then uh, use that with a bit of flux so you can wick it all up. Um, but yeah, other than that, I managed to get everything sort of done. I recapped the whole power supply uh, minus the some of those really, really big ones, which you see there. Those, those tend to be fine, it's normally the smaller ones, um, and I figured while I was in there I might as well just do all of them, um, so that's what I did. So yeah, I'll just recap the power supply and then um, we're ready for some more testing.
I have uh, no idea what that white stuff was on the bottom of the power supply, but uh, it didn't seem to come off. So anyway, some new capacitors going in. And you can see uh, the manufacturer used a bunch of hot glue on some of these components and you can soak them in isopropyl alcohol. I learned this from uh, Volta, who uh, mods those um, consoles. Um, and the hot glue just sort of melts right off it. So you can sort of pick away at it and let it soak in. Uh, really safe way of um, extracting the hot glue from those components without pulling on them because um, you can often pull other things around them out and damage them because the whole thing's sort of uh, glued together. Um, but yeah, other than that, we're just more capacitors and components and then um, good to go. Believe it or not, this part was actually quite hard just getting the cables routed and, and the correct grommets and things like that. The uh, cables had to be routed in there first before I could put the fan in and then yeah, the whole thing, it was just a mess trying to get that all back together, but yeah, managed to do it. Um, also while I was there, I, was, um, I ended up reflowing the VRMs or the voltage regulators um, just because of the constant cooling and heating. Uh, they often crack around the solder joints, so yeah, did that while I was in there as well, I just didn't film it, uh, just to make sure that everything was secured and, you know, happy, but um, yeah, other than that, the power supply um, went back together without a hitch. About a week before I did the power supply, I picked up this uh, Vapo Rust, it's a CRC product, it's reusable so you can um, soak it back in, the, well put it back in the bottle sorry, uh, but I soaked it on the back of the um, shield there. Um, I didn't do the motherboard, um, did that with IPA and stuff, but I let this sit for about 24 hours I think is probably the, the well actually I think I only left it 12, but um, it did a pretty decent job, it's non-corrosive on plastics and things like that. I uh, didn't damage the rear of the plastic in any, any way, shape or form, which was really good. And um, it came up mostly, well, probably about 80%, 85% improved. Um, yeah, really I'm surprised there was any metal left on the back of that shield. Uh, but yeah, I'm just going to slot the rear case back together and um, finally can start reassembling the machine.
All right, now just to fit the uh, memory modules, we're going to start with the VRAM, all two megabytes of it, the cache for the CPU. I think it's an external cache uh, setup that they use, or motherboard cache, not too sure. Um, I wasn't sh too sure the pairing of the memory modules, um, so I just kind of threw most of them in. Um, and then next we're going to put some of the PCI covers. Um, I put this in the Evapo Rust as well. Um, just to, because they're a bit marked up and pretty gross looking from uh, rust I don't know where this thing sat or if this is common um, But it must have been in a very humid environment or in someone's shed or something for years uh, Either or looked like crap. So I <laughs> sort of went back through and tried to clean them up as best I could So you can see here they look, um, I didn't do a before photo but yeah, they look pretty good and we've got the um, I.O. Um, audio sorry, system. It's got S video that you can capture footage with. Um, I think that might be an input for uh, RCA. And then you've got your two RCA audio outs. So, yeah, pretty cool system having that all sort of built in. Um, the last time I had a machine that could do that was like a Macintosh Performer 5300 all-in-one machine and oh, that was like 16 years ago I found that uh, but yeah these things are yeah getting harder and harder to find but yeah clip it all back together um, I managed to clean up some of the ports as well get some deoxid in there and things like that it gave the motherboard a bit of a um, cleaning as well which proved to cause a few issues which you'll see coming up um, I managed to get around them or fix them but yeah, be wary of uh, cleaning motherboards, um, alcohol and stuff like that. A few uh, locking screws for the uh, power supply just to keep that in place. There's one on the back, um, two at the front of the power supply um, just to sort of keep it in there. And lastly we've got a new PRAM battery. Um, I found that these don't require one of these to, to, to boot. Um, but some, since I got new ones, you know, put it in. Um, but yeah, it turns out they don't need, need a PRAM battery to, to post a boot. During um, a bit of this repair process, you'll see me struggling with this SCSI cable. Um, turns out, you know, everyone in the house caught COVID and um, during some of the recapping power supply and fitting that um, ribbon cable, I was sort of pushing through it a little, um, which had a bit of, I had a bit of brain fog, so it probably wasn't the wisest thing to be <laughs> messing around with the power supply. Um, but I did take my time with it. I spent the whole day doing that. So yeah, either or I did turn it on outside just in case, uh, it exploded, but thankfully there was no fire. Um, so you'll see here we get, because I don't have a keyboard yet at this point, I'm using a plastic straw to press the power button on. These uh, machines have one built into the motherboard. Um, but yeah, I get a chime, but that's about it. Uh, so yeah, at this point I thought I actually had a totally dead machine. Um, you'll see here I'm trying different RAM combinations and things like that. I even have the postcard out, but it doesn't work on Macintoshes. Um, sometimes I get a grey screen, sometimes I don't get anything at all. Uh, it turns out there was actually corrosion around the um, memory modules um, caused from my cleaning, believe it or not. Um, it made this sort of white film or this sort of lime build up almost. So some deoxid and a toothbrush around everything that I uh, touched with the IPA um, fixed it right up. Um, and I did test the voltages as well with the multimeter and they were all good. Um, but yeah, thankfully um, now the machine boots. So we are moving along to the next problem, which is the hard drive. Yeah, the hard drive's sounding pretty sad there, isn't it? Sort of clicks a bit and then doesn't get too far, but uh, either way, I reached out to the NZ um, retro community again um, and managed to get a hard drive. Thanks, Anthony, again for that, by the way. Help me out. Transmac, um, getting an OS onto the machine, I had to use this bit of software. 
um, and that's mainly because my Mac Mini that I've got doesn't support any of these PowerPC uh, standards anymore. I could not get a disk burned. I was probably doing it wrong. Every time I go and try and move software and stuff around, I have a hard time with it. But yeah, the um, replacement drive, believe it or not, even though it's, I think, older than the one I pulled out of the machine, it's about one gigabyte in size, um, after half an hour it did test fine and I got all the jumpers all sorted so it all registered with the correct uh, LUN ID or termination ID. Um, yeah, I've got to call it Macintosh HD, I mean, you know, this is a vintage or an older Mac, so yeah. At this point, um, after I used that Transmac software on Windows, which I have um, admittedly used in the past before, I'm not going to lie, it actually works really good. It's kind of um, a cheater's way of getting a bootable disk for a Mac system burned. Um, as I said, I had a huge amount of problems getting software onto this machine. Um, everything was compressed with Stuff It, and I couldn't get Stuff It onto the machine because it required stuff it to unextract it or something that's uh, just where i was getting the software from um i don't know why i just really struggled <laughs> uh, but after a bit of time the os9 installation uh, finished and um, at this point we just reboot into um, os9 very slowly i might add i'm not sure um, if it's my drive or the speed of the machine or what, but if anyone's got any boot time um, standards that they go off or to know this is normal, but it took about uh, 2 minutes or 17, 15 seconds to boot to a desktop. Um, but yeah, either or it did get there um, and we're just going through the normal Mac OS setup wizard. Just asks your name, location, networking stuff things like that. Um, I found it interesting, and I actually forgot about this, um, that the machine comes with, or well, OS 8 and 9 I think, come with Internet Explorer pre-bundled pre in. And I do remember seeing that clip, Steve Jobs announcing that at a keynote and everyone just booed him. Um, but yeah, here's the machine, um, all complete basically. Um, you can see how much memory I've got in the machine, we've got 72 megabytes there quite handy, got a one gigabyte hard drive, so yeah, power it up, let's have a look and see what games and software I've got on it. Alright, so after a pretty lengthy uh, boot up there we finally made it in, and one of the first bits of software I put on was some FTP stuff. Um, just to help getting, you know, get files onto the machine. Um, I've got my control bar there running in quite a few colors, um, 1024 by 768 resolution is quite nice, uh, especially with the LCD that I'm using. Um, but yeah, as I said, there's a few bits of software I've got on here. I've got the essentials, um, got uh, Stuff It, which is used sort of like a, a compression extraction tool for files and applications that are compressed um, that's a must-have especially if you're getting software online everything seems to be compressed either that or they use these things called toast files which are, for me I think are sort of like ISOs um, there's a few bits of software that had that as well um, so you need to download the software in order to mount those images um, I don't know why as I said I got I had a really hard time getting initially the software I needed on this machine to then extract the files um, to use them because they're compressed um, yeah that's because I don't have any really other machines I was using an old iBook at one point to burn discs um, just so I could you know extract have some files on the, on the machine um, but either all got some frog find here. We've got network connectivity um, This is done by action retro and Mac 84 on YouTube um, If you guys watch any vintage stuff on YouTube, I'm sure you've seen these guys. They've got some really cool videos Shout out to them to making uh, for making that um, I've got some basic games on here um, For some reason I couldn't get I didn't realize that control bar would just stay there I mean this is a system 7 application, so that's probably why but Either or, we've got some breakout. It has no sound, but that's okay. Got 
got some solitaire as well although i couldn't make the screen any larger it's really annoying me for some reason having it in this tiny window i just need to lower my resolution down but yeah we've got solitaire and we've got the equivalent of free ski we've got max ski which is a bit more interesting i guess but um yeah runs as well After making it onto the leaderboard there, I got some uh, classics that I had on my old Macintosh, which is some SimCity. Wasn't very good at playing it, but that's okay. Moving on to actually one of my favourite SimCities, which is 2000 of course. Um, I had this version as well on my old LC3, I think it was the, one of the last Macs I had. Um, can't remember if I had the Performer or the LC3, there was this period of crossover, but um, yeah, really struggling with this large city. Uh, this one was really cool, it was Egypt Falls actually, I haven't really explored much of the default cities that were built in, but someone left this sign here, I've got to get rid of that. Everyone loved me until I maxed out the taxes and then they all left, but um, we've got a demo of Duke Nukem 3D. Damn, There's good. no music in this, but um, oh well, you know, still Damn. pretty cool to see it play. Yeah, I really struggled with those mouse controls on that game, but um, thankfully the fancy little eject mechanism works a treat. No stripped gears on that, so no repair needed. Uh, but yeah, the machine's all back together. It's been working pretty good over the last few weeks. No issues there. Uh, just a quick shout out to the New Zealand uh, Vintage Computing Facebook page and the, um, everyone who helped me on there finding bits and pieces and supplies for this thing. It was a bit of a mission to get it back together but um, got there in the end so saved another machine from um, landfill really or recycling. Um, yeah these are getting pretty hard to find but yeah other than that I'm actually really happy with how it all turned out and um, how the machine came out and sure it's got a few rough edges and things on it a bit of character looks like it was well loved at some point but um, yeah other than that I had fun um, fixing it up and restoring it and you always learn something new alrighty thanks for watching